Welcome to Talking Scripture. Grab your Bible and get ready for a great study in the Word of God. We're live. We're live. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Talking Scripture. My name is Gary, and I'm so thankful that you're joining me here tonight. As I'm coming to you live from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains here in East Tennessee. And, uh... Nice day outside today, I guess. It's kind of cloudy, kind of cool. And, of course, I was sick last week, so just getting over being sick, I didn't want to stretch or go too far away from the house. And uh, But anyway, everything is good. We're here to study God's Word tonight, and um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about forgiveness tonight. And forgiveness is something that... uh, Something we all need to talk about at times, I think, because forgiveness is something that that I think a lot of times we withhold from people, and whether we do it intentionally or whether we we do it accidentally. And so we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that tonight. And if you got, uh, let's see here. If you got your Bibles, let's go to Matthew chapter number 18 is where we're going to be at tonight. Matthew chapter number 18, I encourage you to go there. We'll be looking at some other scripture as well, so I hope you got your fingers all set to to do a little bit of walking tonight. And uh, we're talking about forgiveness this week. I'm talking on, on Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Uh, we're going to be talking about my favorite verse in scripture, which is Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 which says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And we're going to look at what that verse means for us today, but we're also going to study some people that lived out that verse. So you want to make sure that you join me each morning this week as we study about doing all things for Christ. It'll be a great study. Um, Get it wherever you got this podcast from. Get it off of Spotify, iHeartRadio, any one of those places you can you can find it at. You can also like our Facebook page, which is SL, well, if you go facebook.com forward slash SLDDOI, Scripture Links Daily Dose of Inspiration, what that stands for. Like that page, and, and um, that way you can get it that way as well. But hey, it's turn to Matthew chapter 18. I'll be back here in just a second for tonight's Bible study. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Talking Scripture. Kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Live weekday mornings. Hi, looking for a new religion? Yeah, I'm looking for something that adds more meaning to my life. Well, you've come to the right place. Are you looking for a guru to follow or a philosophy? Actually, I'm looking for a religion that fulfills the, uh, you know, the the spiritual side of me. This one is very popular with the Hollywood set. Really? And you know what authorities they are on religion. No. Ah, I see you are the discerning type. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a god that's worthy of your worship. Wow, that's that's nice. Uh, So are you allowed to eat meat? Uh, no. Ah. Ah. I know exactly what you're looking for. How's this one? <gasps> That's exactly what I'm looking for. That's what I said. This is a God I can trust. This God always has my best in mind. Of course he does. I'd feel comfortable worshiping this God. I bet he'd even die for me. Mm, don't think so. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? I'll take it. That'll be $30 for the frame and $10 for the mirror. Who do you worship? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at Lifeline Pro. Let's get back for our Bible study. You are listening to Talking Scripture. All right, welcome back to Talking Scripture. And I really hope you pay attention to those those things that are that Lifeline production segment because there's a lot of good stuff in them, a lot of good practical things that when I listen to it, it makes me go, huh. Yeah, you know, so make sure you pay pay attention to them, and because they're one of my favorite things I listen to here uh, when we do these broadcasts. But anyway, tonight we're going to talk about forgiveness. I want to welcome those that are in the chat room tonight and remind you to put any prayer requests you might have, and we'll pray again at the end of the broadcast for those requests. And, uh, f- and likewise, if you have any comments or questions, you know, I'll do my best to try and watch that as it's going by different times, but... Sometimes I can't see it all. So anyway, feel free to put that in there. And if you're listening uh, 
at some later time, you could always join us here at 9 o'clock on Sunday nights uh, for Talking Scripture. Um, tonight we're talking about forgiveness, and I have to ask the question, are you holding a grudge against somebody? Think about that while we pray here. Father, I just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for the rain that we had here in East Tennessee today, Lord. None of us like a rainy day, God, but sometimes we need to have them, Lord. And, Father, I just thank you for each person that's in this chat room tonight, Lord, that's hearing your word, that's taking time out of their day to come and worship you, Lord, and to study your word, Father. And, Lord, I pray that you richly bless those people, Lord. I pray that you open our hearts and minds to hear from you tonight, God. And I pray that you you help us to understand your word and hear the message that you got for us, God. And if if we're holding any kind of unforgiveness against somebody, Lord, I pray that you help us to to release that, Lord, and forgive where we, we need to forgive people at, Father. And Lord, I just thank you that we, we live in a country that we can worship together, even in the midst of the internet, God. And I just pray that you lead our nation, bring it back to you, Father, and and Bring us to a place, Lord, that that we can we can worship you, God, and we can we can share your love and your your word with others, God. Father, I ask you humbly as I know how that you forgive me where I failed you, Lord, and that you speak your words through me tonight. This is your time. Use it to bring glory and honor to you. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Well, for, um, forgiveness is what we're going to talk about tonight. And forgiveness seems like a, a simple little topic to talk about, but there's actually a whole lot of stuff about forgiveness that maybe we don't think about. Because when we go to church, and I'm not bashing the church here, church attendance is vitally important. we got to be in church. But what I'm, what I'm going to say might, might sound a little bad, because a lot of times in church, all as we, we hear is getting saved and getting your name put on the church roll and and and. That's where it seems to end. We're not discipled like we should. We're not taught the Word of God, I don't think, like we should. Therefore, we're left going out and not really knowing how to live the life God wants us to live. And many pastors, mine included, do an excellent job each week opening God's Word and teaching us God's Word. But you can only do so much in a 30-minute sermon. And that's where... Things like Sunday school and your small groups can come in handy. But one thing I think we fail to do is we fail to talk about the importance of forgiveness. And likewise, the what the ramifications would be if we hold a grudge against people. Because let's let's face it, none of us get along with every single person walking down the street today. There's people that rub you the wrong way. I know that. There's people that rub me the wrong way. But where the problem comes in is when we harbor unforgiveness in our life. When we harbor unforgiveness. Maybe you were driving to church today and somebody cut you off on the street and what did you do? You flipped them the bird and you uh, uh, said some words you probably shouldn't have said out the window. And then you get to church and you you walked in and act like everything is fine and and you not don't have a sin to get forgiven. But what if you were the person that got the bird and got the nasty words yelled at? Would you forgive the other driver? Or would you hold a grudge? And then you see that little beat up Toyota coming down the street again and you say, Oh, there's that person, I'm gonna get that revenge now. Is that you? In Matthew chapter eighteen and verse number 35, Jesus says these words, and listen to these words. These are in red in my Bible, so that means these are the words of Jesus. We're going to look at the rest of this parable here in a few minutes. But Jesus says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus it's talking about some unforgiveness here. And unforgiveness is something we shouldn't have. In fact, in, in the sermon or in his Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, one of the phrases here in Matthew chapter six and verse twelve, Jesus says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
we must forgive others. Think about that. We must forgive others. We've got to forgive other people. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our debtors. So even in that prayer, we're saying, God, forgive me as I forgive others. And if I'm not going to forgive others, I can't expect God to forgive me. Jesus said it here in Matthew 18:35, and he implies it here in Matthew 16:12. Or Matthew 6:12, I'm sorry. But we must make sure that we forgive, but we need to tighten it up a little bit and make sure that we forgive from our hearts. That we forgive from our hearts. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3 in verse number 13, he says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And listen to the rest of this verse now. He says, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Similar verses that use the phrase, even as Christ has forgiven you, is found elsewhere in Paul's letters as well. So that's not a one-time thing. That's an important thing. We need to forgive others in the same way that Christ has forgiven us. How has Christ forgiven us? Fully. When we come to Christ and we ask for forgiveness, I don't have this verse written down, but let me look at it up real quick. It's just coming to my mind. 1 John chapter, chapter 1, verse number 9. How does how does God forgive us? 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we ask God for forgiveness, the only way God knows how to forgive is unconditionally. It's it's forgiving us of our debts. He said he will forgive our sins and he will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And therefore, when somebody sins against us, we're praying, God, forgive us as we forgive others. So therefore, we should be forgiving others the same way Christ forgave me, fully, 100%, never to be remembered no more. And let me ask you this, my friends. Is that the way you forgive others? Is that the way you forgive others? If you don't forgive others in that way, we read in Mark chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, we read that unforgiveness can block our relationship with God. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Keep your fingers there at Matthew 18 because we're going to go right back to that here in just a second. Mark chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. These again are the words of Jesus. They're read in my Bible. So these are the words of Jesus. He says, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Think about that. If I'm not willing to forgive somebody else, that means God's not willing to forgive me. Friends, forgiveness is a sign of love. It's a sign of love you have for others. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That shows us how much God loves us, that he gave his son for us. For those of you that are parents, do you love somebody else enough that you would give your son for their sins? Most likely not. But that's how much God loved us. And if we're not willing to forgive others, then God's not going to be willing to forgive me then God's not going to be willing to forgive your unforgiveness. And that's going to damage your relationship with him. That's going to put up a wall right there. And I pray every day that I have no no barriers between me and God. 
that I have no barriers that's blocking my relationship with God. But for many of us, unforgiveness is a barrier. Unforgiveness is a barrier that we got to break down, that we got to get out of our life. And the only way we can do it is not to pray and ask God to forgive you, but it's for you to go and forgive somebody else. Are you willing to do that today? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 18 and let's take a look at this this parable of the unforgiving servant. It's verses 21 through 35. Peter comes to Jesus here and says, Lord, and I'm, I'm sure he probably probably had this Pharisee look about him, if you will. But he came up to him, to Jesus, and said, Lord, how oft shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Or, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? That was a... a I, a is a Pharisee idea, I believe, about forgiving for seven times. And Peter's saying, "Hey, is that all I need to forgive somebody?" And and I could just see somebody having a little little tablet right there, and they say, "Okay, so and so sinned against me one time. Well, there's the second mark, there's the third mark, and hey, you hit all seven marks. I don't got to forgive you no more. Get out of my life." That's not the idea here. And Jesus replies to him here in verse twenty two. And says, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. The point that Jesus was making to Peter is that your forgiveness should be unlimited. Believe me, if, if there was ever a person that would run out of forgiveness from God, if there was a limit, you're listening to him right now. But that's the awesome thing about God is there is no limit to his forgiveness. And there shouldn't be a limit to our forgiveness either. But I'm sure somewhere out there in the world today, most likely here in America, but I'm sure somewhere out there in the world today, somebody is writing down, uh, keeping track of up to 490 times that they're forgiven somebody. And what a sad state that person would be in. Let's take a look at the story, starting here in verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought into him, which ought him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children and all that they had a payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave the debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which ought him a hundred pence, and laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then the Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave all that debt. Because thou desiredst of me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Let's break the story down. There was a man who owed a great amount of money to the king, some 10,000 talents. That was probably, according to biblical scholars, most likely hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars he owed this king. And the king called the payment due, and the man the man begged his forgiveness in verse number 26. He fell down. He worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee. He was begging the king let me have more time. I need more time. And, and the king had compassion in verse 27. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him his debt. At that man's request, the Lord had forgiven his debt 
of thousands, millions of dollars maybe. And the man went away. And look what he did. Look what he did. The same man went out and he found somebody that owed him, according to verse 28, about a hundred, which biblical scholars say today was maybe a few dollars. And he laid hands on him. He took him by the throat and said to him, pay me that thou owest. Pay me that couple hundred dollars, that couple dollars that you owe me. And verse 29 says, his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have and I will pay thee all. In other words, this man prayed the same thing or asked the same thing of his fellow servant as that fellow servant asked the king. And surely this man forgave his, his friend. But verse 30 said, he would not. And he cast him into prison until he paid the debt. There was no mercy for that fellow servant. And then some others saw what had happened and went and told the king. And the king called that original servant back in and lashed out at him. And he was furious and he took away the compassion that he had and the forgiveness that he had and had him tormented and thrown, most likely thrown into prison till he was able to pay everything. What's our application for today? What is the story you got to teach us all these years later? This is what it teaches me anyway, and this is what I'm going to share with you. We have a debt we cannot pay. It's called our sin debt. We can never repay that. God offered forgiveness by the way of the, the commandments, God's law. But we couldn't live up to that. I always challenge people when I'm talking about this. I always challenge people to look at those ten, just those Ten Commandments and see how far down that list you can go before you find one that you broke. And if you're like me, it's not very far down the list at all if I can even get past the first one. We have a debt that we cannot pay back. But through the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, God offers us that forgiveness. Remember John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gives us that forgiveness if we put our faith in Jesus. And then likewise, people who have sinned against us, people who may have, have broken bonds against us, people who may have talked about us behind our back, people who did us wrong. We need to forgive them in the same way that God has forgiven us. How many families are in turmoil today because of unforgiveness? Who do you need to forgive today? While Jesus was on the cross, among his last words was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even while he was dying, gasping for his last breath, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. And what's holding your forgiveness back? Is it your dislike for somebody? Is it because you're afraid to offer forgiveness? What's holding your forgiveness back? And who do you need to forgive? Father, I thank you again for this day, Lord, and I thank you for this opportunity we have to gather around your word. And Father, I pray that you take this word tonight and penetrate the hearts of those of us that are here, Lord, and those of us that are listening at a later time, God. Who is it in our lives that we need to forgive? Father, just work in our hearts, work in our minds, Lord, and help us to get things made right with you. Maybe there's somebody here that, that has never accepted your forgiveness, Lord. Help them to cry out and ask for your forgiveness and confess their sins, Lord, and get things made right with you while the opportunity is still here. Maybe there's somebody that did that here tonight, God, but they're letting unforgiveness have a spot in their heart. 
that doesn't need to be there, Lord. Help them to tear that that unforgiveness out. Help them to, to forgive others the same way that you've forgiven us. And Father, for the person that's right in the middle of your will, I pray that you give them the strength to keep going and to keep walking after you. Father, I pray that you go with us now, Lord, and that you bring us back at your next appointed time. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Thank you again so much for joining me here tonight on Talking Scripture, and I hope to see you back here next Sunday night at 9 o'clock as we once again break the bread of life and open up the Word of God. Don't forget to join me Monday through Friday for Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. And uh, it's going to be a great study this week. You don't want to miss it. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, coming soon to Amazon Music, Amazon Podcasts, whatever they call it, um, Spotify, iHeartRadio, any, anywhere you get your podcasts from. Look up Scripture Links Daily and also look up Talking Scripture and make sure you subscribe to both of them. That way you always you always get our broadcasts. Thank you so much. Make sure you like and share this broadcast with somebody today. Remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with somebody today. Have a blessed day. Mm